Okay, hello guys. This is just a quick tutorial uh, to, uh, to show you how to use those machines here right here. Um, well, because it is actually explained how to uh, use those inserters, but it's not that intuitive in my opinion. So let's start right into it. So okay, we have here an advanced item inserter, which uh, will get items from this chest and put it over here. This is our input machine, and right here we have to. We always have to uh, get um, stay at those two variables which is shown in the menu right here. So we always have to get a command, which always has to be the variable C. And I show you here, I just wrote add, I put it to string, you can say it here. And yeah, I chose a variable C press apply and we have that here and then then we always have to have the variable a and if we we have add and c so we have to get a and I wrote item in a because the inserter should pick up an item from the chest and so those two things are uh, necessary, you can't leave them out. What you can leave out is everything which is stated with optional. So, stack, I come to that in a later example. What that means, um, I guess this is quite self explanatory. I used this optional thing here how many items the inserter should take out. And those are some things that you can also play with. You can say in which direction the inserter should get these items and put it in. Yeah. Um, okay, so those variables are set. And if I activate this, you will do this, but it's good. So we have an integer of one, and you see that you put item that always picks it first. And um, uh, if I, oops, I accidentally deleted this, so if we put the five here, I actually don't know what these three buttons do. I don't know. Okay, so if you press apply and then do it. He, okay, this is interesting. Why does he hold it? Five put it puts it in this inventory. Okay, so interesting if you have zero here, then it will just take one. Okay. Nice, so this is the first example. Now let's get a bit more complex. So uh, you can also, as I said, use this thing here. This is the stack this is a bit more complex. It always has to be the variable s, otherwise you can't, the inserter can't read it. And here you can state which item the inserter should use. Um, in my example here, I just put a chest in, and uh, he will take out. This is the quantity of uh, how many of these uh, items he will take out. And I just press apply. Yeah. Other thing is, so I, I just copied this item and that, 
and this will be the a we take one and we we here we do this two times. So if I would have pressed that, you will uh, insert I would take out two chests from here or uh, two times one chest and put it over here. Actually, this is a norm inserter, and I don't think there's a difference in this version between advanced inserter and the norm inserter. This is, might be a bit quicker, but yeah, I don't know. <coughs> For you, it might be not the case anymore, so I would recommend to read the menu as it's not that much ta of the text. But yeah, okay, and so this is the. Uh, I forgot how it's called. The arithmetic logic machine. This thing here is a uh, um, data input machine. Yeah, you can look it up how you build it and such. Um, yeah, so this arithmetic logic machine will um, actually compute and do things with the old data which comes in so which is quite important in the left side always is the input and the right is always the output sometimes it's a bit different i guess it's how you build this complex structure but you can orientate if the red red things are on the right or on the left and if it's like this input is here output is here so yeah good you can put here, the first thing you have is storage, you can put here some circuits. Um, if you have not enough items or such, you can see what you have available. I, here I use the uh, arithmetic circuit, and as you see here, I, we have the variable t, which is how many repetitions the inserter will take and I just have here to show you how this logic machine works took the variable t and add 3 to it so it's addition you press here plus say which variable you will have at the end so it's for, expre for example B, we want an addition. I don't know what this thing does to be honest, I just leave it out always. On the next page we take a, a value maybe 2 and on the next page, the second page, we take a value 4 for example. And then he, this operation here the addition will add 2 and 4 together and resort as a B. Um, this is a bit yeah, not really useful right here, but you can choose in the add right here and choose a variable which is coming in, an uh, input. So we could choose the T as an input. Interesting, you can use it right now because I already use it. Okay, press it here. Um, yes, this version is a bit buggy, so you, I don't know, maybe this video will be outdated in a week or so. I don't know. And uh, edit before and sort in B. But I just, you can remove it. I just I store T. But first get the first T, add 3, and then sort in T and send it uh, away. So, and then here I modified the item stack, which is um, the quantity. So what I exactly do is I take this, this is the item stack, and modify this count here. This is the item quantity. This is now set to 1. And with that, I will set it to 12. <coughs> so
So the thing, how this works is, I click here on set quantity, take the variable s that comes in from the, here from the input here, yeah, this. and set the value to 12 and then sort as the uh, variable s okay so and now the thing is we have in addition here and yeah so i i guess i will just put this on and you can see, so just here, the signal comes here, gets calculated and sent to him. And now we have 15 chests right here. I explain how we, that could happen. Um, he took 15 chests because he um, has the instruction to get 12 chests, but with each time he is taking five because this integer here says how many items you get at once um, so we have two here added three here so we you will always get five a stack of five and he tries to accomplish 15 uh, 12 but because he always takes 5 at the time, he takes 15 out. So the thing is, I hope I didn't confuse you too much. Um, These integer things can mean two things. Either way, how if you set it to... If the item stack is set to 1, the this integer here will uh, mean how many iterations the inserter will do. So if it sets to 1, the stack, but uh, the integer is set to 2, he will take two, uh, one item but two times. But if you have a stack size of maybe 3 and an integer of uh, of four this means so many items he will take at once but if you have yeah I, maybe you have to try it yourself but you yeah it's a bit it's a bit confusing in my opinion and i don't think i explained that well but yeah so okay now let's head to another example I just extract this item here in this silo and silos will hold the items until you apply redstone signal so you can actually this is we have this thing here that converts data types to redstone signals and vice versa it needs power of course and yeah, right here I just have a data to redstone which, okay, I explain first which data I take. So this is a, a data input machine, and I generate a variable A, which is a Boolean. If you're not familiar with computers or uh, logic, Boolean is just a true or false. So you have uh, either a one or a zero, if you will. So. Yeah, we, and I put it to true now, press apply, and if I will send this here, this machine will take the variable A, which I stated here is a boolean, so he expects a boolean, and forms that into a redstone signal. So a true boolean signal would be redstone on, and a false boolean signal would be redstone off. And I choose the channel orange for the redstone thing. You can change the color here if you shift right click so I choose orange and this is set to output and 
So if I press here to send the signal, you will see it gets a redstone and those chests will get extracted. Okay, and this right here is another contraption I will show you now. Um, yeah, you hear the sound because we have here a programmable, programmable speaker uh, which can play any Minecraft sound you have, but you have to send the data to it to say which sound you want. So here in this data per machine, I feed the data necessary for the speaker. So I say uh, the sounds should only play once. Here, yeah, so O is a boolean. If played once, if true, yeah. So, and then I say which sound you should play. I just took the Minecraft block and the landing sound. And then stated the volume. I don't know if this is bug, but if I change the, the volume, nothing really happens. And I don't know what these three bonds do. So I just turn it to one because you have to state the volume. <coughs> and the tone pitch comes from this machine right here. Uh, okay, so if the pitches, I will explain it later, uh, in a moment, I mean. So this thing is a data combiner, which will um, combine two data inputs. So it gets data from here, data from here, puts, fuses them together and puts them there. Um, okay, I explained that in the detail just in a moment. I will come to that now. So this is a scanner which scans items that come that will come here. It can store anything which is uh, from this data type item sex so it can come can uh, register how, which item you have and be T data or damage or whatever and how many of that so and it will just send the raw data until you yeah, uh, can further compute with that. And so that's what I did here. So I, I put this item stack operation circuit in here and say, okay, get the quantity, also how many items we get here uh, at a time. Uh, so the variable we get from this is always s. It sends its data as an s. So as I said, get the quantity from s. This here you can ignore. I guess this is some unsigned. You can actually do something here on this page. So yeah, just press apply. And saw it in variable a. And the next thing it should do is a arithmetic circuit. This takes, so it takes set multiplication. This takes the variable A, the, which is the quantity of items that's passed this detector, and multiplies it with 100. And the result from this calculation will be um, saved in the variable T, which is then send with this cable, fuse here in this machine, and then together send to this um, siren. <coughs> siren. Okay, so now the interface for this thing. This is actually can be used as a data buffer. It's a bit confusing as well. I don't didn't get the description of this really. So. Which me, it's. It seems like 
that uh, if you have this uh, this letters in orange or red then it will save the data from this variable on the left side so and this is what we do with O S and B. So S O and B will be safe from the left side. And the uh, data for the variable T uh, is green because the two green colors are for saving the data from the right side. So that means if we get data from here the last data which came from the left side we put together and then send and vice versa if we send data from here um, this the last value from this side we put, put together and send here if we don't send uh, save it data from one side this wouldn't work so if we don't save me for example, the t variable, and we send data from here. This this won't be sent any further because we have no data from this side yet. So this data will only be saved, and then he waits until you get he gets data from this side, and then sends it to this speaker. So. Let me show you what this calculation does. So if I just put one item here, we have the normal sound for that. But if I put, for example, 19 of these items, the sound is much higher because the pitch will be much higher according to our calculation, 19, 19 times 100. The th funny thing is, here it states that the pitch has to be between 0 and 100, but as there's actually no change in sound, uh, if you if you have a value between this, only if you exceed 100 it will get this high pitch sound, but maybe this is a bug and will be fixed in the future. But yeah, this is how this thing works. And yeah. Um, so we have this block, this block. This is actually pretty nice I guess because this is uh, it saves this data and fuses two together you actually have some other blocks which just holds data and then releases it uh, but yeah this I guess is the most versatile one so I chose to present this to you okay now we have even another possibility to use this data here, which we which, which we read, we can <coughs> actually there are two uh, possibilities. One, we can use this data to tell the an, an inserter which item to extract. For example, let's tell him go get this coil and we see he put a okay this chats those chats are already there um he will take one of this item and put it over there and you can tell him take three of them and as you see it goes three times around and Puts three of those coil blocks. It's just you can. I can also use like this chest here. And here we will just seventeen chests over here. So yeah, this is the first. Example, but we can also th something else. So, okay, I will put 
which is uh, we can use this data similarly as in this machine to um, tell yeah I, I just show you okay so we first thing we do is say get the quantity of the scanned items which is a which you get from the variable s and store it in a. This is the first thing we do here. Then we say create a new variable s and in this s set the quantity. And then I said we, I want to have, oh, shouldn't have that. Then I say that which item I want, in which this case S. Um, count to say the count here doesn't really matter. I found out. So if you say I don't know any number, it won't matter. And but the important thing here is you can set how many. So this thing here will be overrode by this parameter right here. We set the value, the integer, how many, so the quantity of, of how many chests you will take, which we stored here. So we, so we can actually count how many items have passed here and tell this inserter get exactly that many um, items and put it in this chest. And in this here, we state which item we want. Chess, we could put anything else. So yeah, let's try it and put this, those four things here. And here we go. Okay, this, I have to redo this because you can see the difference. So now we have zero chests. And then now you will see it took four chests out of there and put it in here. Yeah. So that works as well. And that but yeah, as you already know this only works because I, I stated those other parameters like for the inserter in this machine here and so I said get an item in A and for C, I said he should add. We could also set to a certain number, so we could say extract as long as you only have 16 chests in here, for example. This is all the things that you can do. So I uh, have another example for this data merger right here. Because in this example, I only uh, save the data for the var variables a, c, and t, which is um, the, those instructions here and how many we take. It's always one. So we always take one at a time. This is why he, if he extracts four chests, will get four times the amount. If I change this to four and here send the package. This will now be stored in here. And if we throw these four items in here, we will just do one iteration. Ultimately um, extracts this four chests. Actually, we extracted eight. Let me try it again. No, oh, I was right. Extracted, extracted those four chests from here to here. So yeah, this is what I. And if I would have uh, stored the value. S here he 
data uh, uh, this thing would activate after I send this data here again because as I explained uh, this thing only sends data if he has data from two sides but if we don't save this variable and then send it a bit oh, maybe I have to This one first. This. Okay. I don't know. I don't really understand this thing, to be honest. So, yeah. That's all I wanted to show. I hope this maybe helped a bit. And, yeah. So, uh, so, so I have one another addition. You can have some logic operations with your data in this thing in this arithmetic logic machine you can compare two values this just works with those gates here and or not nant nor x or x nor gates and i just want to show you if you don't know what this is this is an and gate which means the signal will only pass if both statements are true. And this is an OR gauge which will let the signal through if either one or both sides are true. Yeah, and with operations like this you can compare maybe are there 60 items in the chest and is are there 10 items in this chest if true then extract items and whatnot you can uh, do and this right here would be an uh, an and gate which is an and gate but if both statements are true then the signal will be off. So I'll show you. Then signal is on. And then signal is on. And if both are off, the signal also is off. The other things you can Google, I guess. Just want to quickly demonstrate. So you can, with those operators, you can compare everything and do logic operations for everything so yeah that's it thank you for your time